Hello and welcome to Proceeding Onward in America. QA. Today we would like to discuss our little lessons learned in the past couple of weeks of having Woody. So we kind of made a list on what we've learned and lessons that we know not to do next time. And we think we should pass on these lessons to newbies. Newbies. Yes. So let's start it off. All right, number one, checklists are important. They are needed. I don't care how you're going to do it. Have it on a piece of paper, uh, chalkboard. Put chalkboard. You put it on a whiteboard. Put it on a piece of paper, laminate it. Use a marker to Text check it off. Text message each other. Text message each other. Do something. But checklists, they're so important. There are so many things that we have forgotten that we're like, oh, we will forget about this. Walk, walk. And we forgot. Next time we're going to go for the checklist. Sign, take off. Check. Check, check, check. And I'm going to laminate it. That was another lesson learned. Another important one we forgot to do is lights. I know we love that sign to death, but we forgot to check our lights the last time we came out. You gotta make sure they're working. Because if you start turning or if you put on your brakes and they're not plugged in properly or you didn't check them to make sure they even work it, person behind you is not going to know what's happening and you may get hit. Next. Sewer hose holder. You need a sewer hose holder. From our previous times at campsites, we didn't have one, but we got one now. You've seen it on our last video, but I had to maneuver what I could from wood to stones to pipes. I had to create my own sewer hose line flow to let the poop poop go down the whole hole. <laughs> so you need something, some type of slide, and we would definitely recommend a sewer hose holder so that way it flows on down. Easy to set up and easy to put away. Check around the camper and the camp spot before you leave and then after you leave. Yes, it's always good to check before you get there. That way you're making sure everything is cleared and it's ready to, for you to back in. And it's also good that when you're pulling out, just don't pull out too far. Just pull out of the camp's area and then get out the car and check around to make sure you didn't leave nothing. It could be a pen, it could be a pencil, it can be your sewer hose, it can be your water line, it could be anything you don't know. So just get out the truck and go check. Make sure everything is picked up and put away until it's proper place. You wouldn't believe how many campsites that we pulled in that we saw that other people have less things. And then as we're leaving, this person left something in the awning. Check out our other videos, but we left behind almost. So you need to check around before you leave as well to make sure nothing is left out or is stuck in an awning. <laughs> Yeah. All right, plan your next spot of where you're going to park the RV. It's always good to have a plan. Even though plans don't work out the first time, always plan ahead. But check out our campsite hunting in Kentucky to see what some of the things that we've learned. And the funny thing is, the places that we checked out, we ended up not going to. If you decide to go somewhere and it's a popular spot, try to hit there on a Monday or Tuesday. Because usually on the weekends, that's when they start filling up. So a lot of our places that we went to and we camped at, it was a, you could stay there for 14 days. And we showed up on a Monday, Tuesday. Most of the people were gone after the weekend. You found a prime spot. The last spot we were at had a perfect view and nobody was there. So everybody was jealous that we were located. And everybody wanted to take our spot. Make sure you plan ahead. Your tank levels and battery indicator. The ones that come with the RV and you just purchase it. Chances yes. are, they're not the good models. All they give you is a light that says half full, half empty, it's never 100% accurate. Somewhere in between. Not saying that this one's horrible. It, it's pretty, it's accurate to a point. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. The indicators that we realized is our solar panel, it showed that our battery was lower than what our indicator did inside. So it was not, it's saying that we had a full battery and our lovely little solar panel said that we were about one third to maybe a half full. 
If you have any recommendations on what to purchase, possibly for a better indicator, or what to do for these problems, let us know down below. Airflow and fans, what are needed in an RV. So one thing we learned is we have one fan in the way back. And the guy said, open up all your windows and it will suck all the air out because it will take all the hot air from up top and all the cold air will come in and it will work just fine. That's a big plot. <laughs> it's best to invest in a better fan or a better model fan, which is what we're planning on doing soon because this fan still makes it hot. And we have it running all day. Um, but we will see how that goes. And another thing is with the little vent cover on the top. When it rains, guess what? You can't leave it open. Yep. So our lesson is when it rains, we got to sweat it out. Yeah. Luckily, we have the windows that tilt out so we can leave those open when it's raining. But the vent covers up top, they cannot be left open. And then we have to close the fan so there's no air circulating inside. So we also are wanting to invest in one of those. RV dome. So RV we can dome. make it rain and still blow some fans. Mm -hmm. And it would definitely help when we're going down that road. Our sink. We let that flow. <laughs> we accidentally flooded our kitchen. Check that video out. It's really funny. We learned that anytime we need to make sure we turn off our kitchen pipes, our bathroom pipes, and make sure they're off and in the off position and cannot be turned on while we're riding down the road. All right, another one is if you don't use all of your water, drain it. It is best to drain your tanks when you're leaving, especially if they are not 100% full. It is not good to go driving down the road with a half a tank of fresh water or black water or gray water. So make sure you drain it. It's always good to get rid of your gray water and your black water before you leave. And for your fresh water, if it is not full. You don't want that free surface effect or the sloshing effect of it going back and forth. So make sure you drain your tanks so you don't have that free surface effect or the sloshing of the tanks. And also another thing, the weight. The weight of the water can add to how much you're towing. Eight pounds per gallon that you're adding to your weight of your RV that your truck or vehicle has to pull. So make sure that you drain your tanks to save on fuel. Now we understand if you want to fill up your fresh water tank before going to your next spot, especially if you're boondocking. Yes. But if you're not going to be boondocking, it is best to drive with it completely empty. When you are taking the RV off of the truck or putting it onto the truck, you need things, anything. So, and our truck is pretty high. So to get it off, and then down on the block of wood that we had, it was still slanted. So we needed to get it off the wood and onto a lower surface and our stabilizer cannot get it off our truck as it was on the floor. So we had to be creative and use a lot of wood and other stones and rocks to basically lift it off the truck, put it onto something else and then take it off the block to put it onto a lower surface and then vice versa to get it back on. So it was a long process trying to get our RV off our truck and back on our truck. But then we thought of, later on, a jack. We had a jack the whole time in the back of our truck and didn't even decide on using it. So next time, that's our lesson. We're going to use the jack in the back of the truck to help us get everything situated a little bit better. Patience with your loved one. About that. <laughs> You're in yes. a small area. You're in a small area. <laughs> and it's definitely the opposite. Sometimes you just want to strangle them. Sometimes you just want to drive off and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing is we're going to on to new adventures to go around and see new things. So we're not always going to be stuck in one spot. But we do have different goals sometimes and that causes issues. And also incorporate your time together and some of your time apart. Uh, sometimes maybe one person stays inside, one person stays outside. Do your own little thing. You don't always have to be next to each other. 
just know you have goals. And that brings up the other part of it is take your time to do your thing. But we can still make this happen. And that's all that matters. Pretty soon, we're going to be definitely traveling down the road from state to state. And we will be continuing to watch us, I hope. Just keep subscribing and keep sharing this video off with all many friends. We're hope hoping for Alaska next year. So yes. follow our journey. So like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll get back to any questions you have. And if you have any place that you think we should stop at, let us know. In the comment section. It will help you out a lot better if you also hit that bell button down there after you subscribe. That way as soon as we upload it, bing, you get that notification and you get to go watch it right away but we try our hardest to please you guys we enjoy your likes we enjoy your comments and we definitely definitely are willing to keep making these videos to make you happy soon we might even set up a live video to actually speak with y'all live so keep an eye out for that as well so thank you for following and keep following us and we'll talk to y'all later have a great day Bye. -bye.